civilizations in large numbers. But I think we should be wary of drinking the science fiction Kool-Aid. Uh, we have another diagnostic about the denizens in our galaxy, and that's data. And we actually do have data. There are numerous types of observations of our galaxy that would have revealed the supposed numerous technological civilizations if they were in fact out there. And so these non-detections of extraterrestrial intelligent life, those non-detections are mounting in numbers and they are conveniently left out of Star Trek episodes. So I'd like to share some of the data with you as I see it. First of all, and I think this is quite important, uh, we now know that even though the Earth is 5 billion years old and the galaxy is 10 billion years old with a B, hominids arose only 4 million years ago. Why did it take so long and could it be lucky that we arose after 4 billion years? Could it typically be 8 uh, billion years? Now, of course, the galaxy uh, is thought to be teeming with intelligent life according to science fiction lore. And, of course, to do a calculation on the back of an envelope as to how many advanced civilizations there are, you might take the most pessimistic view and say, oh, it, uh, intelligent life is a one in a million throw of the dice, the, the end product of the Drake equation. And if you do that, sure, you get a big number for the number of advanced civilizations. You multiply a millionth by 30 billion planetary systems or so in our Milky Way galaxy, and you immediately see that there should be thousands of advanced civilizations in the Milky Way. And I do mean advanced because the galaxy being 10 billion years old, most other civilizations would be millions, maybe billions of years older, more advanced than us. They would have technology beyond our wildest dreams. So the, the notion from the science fiction novels uh, is certainly justified by that back of the envelope calculation. But I think what we have to consider now seriously are the non-detections, our lack of detections of advanced technological life that, that our galaxy is supposedly filled with. The moon is a perfectly good example. We traveled there because we were curious. But when you look at the surface of the moon, you see no obelisks. There are no telescopes left by advanced civilizations, uh, no, no uh, seismometers, uh, no telescopes watching us here on the Earth. There are, however, footsteps on the moon. They're all ours, despite the lack of erosion on the moon. We are the only critters in the galaxy that have gone there. Same for Mars. It's a flytrap, but no signs of advanced life ever having investigated Mars. After four and a half billion years in a galaxy teeming with advanced civilization, nobody came to Mars except us. The Earth even more so. This is a Shangri-La. We have beachfront property. Uh, we have uh, you know, uh, tropical rainforests. Why didn't any of the advanced civilizations notice this beautiful planet, set up golf courses on the uh, beachfront property, tennis courts, and so on, come here for a vacation uh, interlude? The Earth hasn't apparently attracted any advanced civilizations, despite the galaxy teeming with them, for four billion years. It's an amazing non-detection. Moreover, professional telescopes haven't seen in any kind of clarity the UFOs that you often hear about from Nebraska farmers. Uh, the night sky doesn't contain the gamma rays from the matter-antimatter engines that might be powering those spacecraft. Where are the gamma rays from all those Romulans and Klingons? And moreover, they could easily send probes to our Earth. Why haven't all these advanced civilizations just sent a camera, have it orbit the Earth and watch us? We just don't see them. They'd be broadcasting radio waves. And then Dan is right, I can't help but mention, that 40 years has gone by, and one should not dismiss entirely the fact that for 40 years, not a peep from the aliens. Um, so we really do have to ask whether it's possible that the galaxy is not teeming with advanced life. Maybe we've made a mistake. The science fiction writers have often, have often made mistakes. They often get things right. And I think the ant analogy is quite interesting because, in fact, even if you're kind of a stupid extraterrestrial civilization, you would eventually uh, stumble across our sun and our Earth. And so I want to show you a simulation that any of you can do by imagining a civilization that's intelligent and technological, 
a few hundred light years away from our sun. That's a pretty fair distance. They could easily send probes here with, within just a few million years. Uh, and I want to just click out of PowerPoint now and show you this si si simulation of civilizations. This is a real-time simulation uh, that, any, like I say, any of you can do. The sun is at the center, and I'm going to put an arbitrary star in the famous Hipparchos catalog of stars where that red dot is, and I'm going to run the simulation of a civilization that blindly, like ants, sends out a probe to the nearest star, and then the next nearest star, and then the next nearest star, and so on, sending probes that might have nothing more than a camera on them to the nearest star, one after the other, taking a, maybe a hundred years to launch the next probe, and I've put in a speed uh, for these probes of a tenth the speed of light. And so here's the simulation. I'm going to actually run this real time uh, using the language IDL. Here it goes. You're seeing all the stars in the Hipparchos catalog. The, the civilization is in red. The sun is in yellow. And you notice very quickly, even though the civilization was almost 100 light years away, the probes from that civilization hit the sun. And now that civilization is indeed exploring other stars. Uh, within a few hundred light years. Uh, I'm going to run this again. You can see the elapsed time in the upper left. This did take a long time. Traveling at a tenth the speed of light, it takes you know, many years, decades, a hundred years or more to send probes to the nearest stars. I'll run this again and you can see the civilization on the right and the sun uh, in the center there. And you'll see that very quickly <clears throat> the uh, sun is discovered by that civilization there. And each one of those lines you see is a probe going out, time sped up there, millions of years going by. OK, so the bottom line is, in the lifetime of the galaxy, which is 10 billion years, a few million years to send probes to us and discover us, no problem. And so the argument can easily be made that if there were an advanced civilization within a few hundred light years of us, even a thousand light years of us, they would have easily been here by now, one way uh, or the other. So now I'm going to go back to PowerPoint, if I'm lucky. <clears throat> so there's my ant simulation. By the way, that's the most pessimistic case. Notice that I had that poor civilization send out probe after probe they didn't actually colonize another star and then send out probes from there. If you do that, you get a geometrical increase in the uh, coverage of the galaxy. And of course, then you discover the sun much more quickly. So if an advanced civilization can actually travel uh, to the stars and launch from there, uh, they would have been here in the blink of an eye. Another thing to keep in mind is sort of poetic. Species, apparently, with intelligence, love to travel. They love to explore. Indeed, even bacteria have covered the planet Earth. The cosmic ocean we often talk about in space, but we have a real ocean here on the Earth. And if you sample the water anywhere on the Earth, it doesn't matter if it's in the Arctic or in the desert, you will find bacteria uh, swar swar swarming around. In fact, this looks like a picture of the night sky but sort of poetically, it's actually a picture of ocean water showing you that anywhere on the Earth, you find life by scooping it up. And I think so it would be with advanced technological life. They would simply populate the galaxy. Now, about the rare Earth hypothesis, I'll say a couple of things. There are many factors that make our Earth possibly a bit unusual and maybe extraordinarily unusual. And there are so many of these factors, Dan named a whole bunch of them, that each one could be a hundredth. And if you multiply them together, maybe the Earth is one in a million or one in a billion. One topic that rarely gets talked about is water, crucial for life. The Earth is amazing. Only 0.03% of the mass of the Earth is in the form of water. What if the Earth had twice as much water or three times as much water? 0.06%, 0.09%. Why not? Well, if it did, the Earth would be covered with water. We would have a planet Earth that was like a, a bad Kevin Costner film. Uh, 